This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. They have beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything so you can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. But if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help you out. Head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Grace, J-R-A-C-E, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hi, Jack Ferry. Hi, Grace Helbig. How well, are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Trying to stay cool. Don't, yeah, I mean, it's that's... the heat of summer right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the mission statement for everyone right now. It is a hot one. It is. It yeah. was like Palm Springs level hot the other day here in Los Angeles. It yeah. was crazy. What do you do to combat the heat? Um, well, I just moved into a new apartment. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. And um, it has an air conditioner, which is oh, something I didn't have when I was living near the beach. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you don't really have to think too much about it now. Yeah. So when I when it's that hot, I can just crank the AC. Although I don't like to use the AC because it's really, really loud. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just those like window units or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, so I don't use it most of the time because I live close enough to the beach where I get like kind of a breeze. But um, I needed it this week. It was brutal. Yeah, it's really it's it's I don't like being freezing cold, but I also don't like being this hot. Yeah. Um, what I, mean, a comp- I prefer to be hot, but sure. not this hot. I mean, this is a wildly <laughs> compelling conversation that we're having. But also, I think the heat brings out kind of the worst and best in people because it's just like there's something about your body and your brain that kind of just says, fuck all of it yeah. when you're that hot that you either hate everyone around you <laughs> yeah. or you just have zero fucks less left to give about anyone. It's much like being hangry. Yeah, it feels like people are either hangry or on Molly. It's like <laughs> right. that's how people kind of operate in the heat. It feels like they're just sort of hanging on, trying to enjoy it, or they're just pissed yeah. about everything. And you just got back from the East Coast. I which... went to the East Coast for the Fourth of July, which I saw so many characters on the East Coast, which is what le- leads me to believe that, like, it really the heat and the cold, extreme temperatures heighten people's like inhibitions and their triggers. Yeah, sure. People are so ready to fight or they're so ready to just sweat it out and say no to everything and not do anything. But it wasn't oppressively hot when you were there. It was no, just really No, it's just humid. like walking through like wet laundry in a sauna. <laughs> yeah. If you just like walked face first into a wet laundry like clothesline inside of a, like a, a sauna and sure. that's what it felt like to me. So you are from the East Coast originally. Yeah, obviously. and I've been desensitized to the humidity that happens on the East Coast because yeah. I've lived out here for six years. Also, you also now own a home in uh, Palm Springs. In the desert. Yeah. Which is the driest <laughs> of yeah. heat. <laughs> so all the extremes. I've covered yeah. all the extremes of temperature, et cetera. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's a weird. Uh, I forget every year how hot it gets. Yeah, but it also gets the hottest in September here. I know that is something that's so, so we have so much left to go. Yeah, we're only I know. In, at the end of July now. I know it's crazy. Um, plans for the rest of the summer. Um, mostly just that, just staying cool and trying to fix up my new apartment, which I'm very excited about. Oh, yeah. have you found anything haunted yet? Oh, you know, there are weird things because uh, mm-hmm. it's an old building. Right. So the other day I, uh, during like this crazy heat wave we were having, uh, I went to wash my hands in the middle of the day and I was the only person in the building I know because there's like seven units and there was n- mine was the only car that was there. Right. And so I go to wash my hands and I was like, oh, I guess I turned on the wrong faucet because this is clearly the hot water. Turns out, nope. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apparently in my building, it's an old building. I think it was built mm-hmm. in like the 50s or 60s. Um, yeah, I guess the water pipes just kind of cook in the sun and get super hot. So it takes the cold water and boils it. Yeah. So you have to, not boils it, but it was like definitely hot. So I had to like let that. So living in an old building is kind of cool because it's like, it's got a lot of character. It's got a lot of, and it's got like, and it's quiet because like Mm -hmm. the walls are solid. The floors are solid. So like you don't hear your neighbors quite as much, which is all that stuff is lovely. 
but it's definitely got its little quirks and that being yeah. one of them. It's like when you see someone's grandparents and they're like, oh, look how like they still dress the same from like the 20s and look how fun <laughs> they are. But then they're kind of racist. Right, yeah. And you're they, like, they've also took that from their past as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> well, something that happened on the East Coast that I just remembered is the first hotel that we were staying in um, for 4th of July, Brooks was in the shower and he comes out of the shower and he just goes, look at the mirror. And I looked at it and it just had the word help written in the top in the steam. What? Yeah, that someone, I guess, had done that before. As a joke. As hopefully. a joke. But then he wiped over it in the steam and every time one of us got a shower, it showed back up. <gasps> just help at the top of the That's mirror. so creepy. And at first I was like, I can't do this. I can't be. I get so scared and freaked out so easily. So I drank my way through it <laughs> till I forgot that it was there and I just fell asleep. Wow. It was the perfect holiday. That's some Gabby show level shit right there, man. Yeah, it was creepy, but I tried to remind myself that I'm like, this is just, but also a great thing to do. Kind of, I kind of want to do that in every hotel room now. Just leave behind a message on the board. It's kind of a brilliant idea. Or on the mirror, rather. Yeah, so take that listeners and do with it what you please so i did think that maybe i spotted a ghost Ooh. briefly while i was in my apartment but it turns out it was just my reflection the thing is i'm not used to having la, 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 so la, la, many la, la, no la. seriously i'm not used to having so many mirrors in, oh, in my apartment oh jack and his mirrors get ready for the gram selfies oh, forget it forget it it's gonna be crazy <laughs> Here they come. it's gonna be like the infinity selfies of like mirrors back to back <laughs> <laughs> well it's like because like in this new apartment all of the closet doors are mm -hmm. just giant full body mirrors Ooh. which I'm not used to now I get why you got this apartment and you were so <laughs> excited about it yeah 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 so there was a moment where I was like what the fuck Oh, that's me. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah, so not really a ghost. I don't think my place is haunted, um, but I'm very excited about having- But there's still time to find out. Yeah, there's plenty of time. You know, I've only been in it for like a week. Yeah. So Sage that place. <laughs> get some sage. Oh, I've heard about that. What is that supposed to do exactly? It's supposed to get rid of all of like the, any, the evil lingering, any of like the past trauma that's happened in the, your space. I it's see. Supposed to, like Because the ghosts don't like the smell of it. Uh, well, that's my my very loose understanding. I think it's also like, let's say you had a couple that lived in your apartment before you and they fought all the time. So the energy is very oh, negative. So okay. it just kind of like brings that supposedly out of it. It's just basically you light a leaf on fire and wave it around at a wall. Okay, got it. Yeah, so go for it. Well, my place has very good energy and I'd be afraid of losing that. So maybe I won't say it. Hold on to that good energy. And yeah. speaking of good energy. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. We got a guy that's got the screamiest, best energy. Yes. And I'm so excited that he's here with us today. Comedian Nick Turner is joining us on this episode of Not Too Deep. And, you know, he... You know, he's got such good energy that he really attracts some of the most colorful characters to his stand-up sets. <laughs> he really does. So we're going to hear all about that. Let's uh, let's talk to Nick Turner on this episode of Not Too Deep. Not, not too deep. With Clay Seidbeck. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at Squarespace. <laughs> We love these guys. We do. They've been they've been sponsoring us since pretty much the beginning. Um, they're good friends of ours. Mm -hmm. They make and a great product, which I actually use, which works really well. They're a great service. If you want to launch your passion project, they make it easier than ever. That's right. Whether you're looking to start a new business, to showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more... Squarespace is the tool for you. Yeah, they have beautiful templates that are created by world-class designers, and they offer the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, so you can make a beautiful website all on your own. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics to help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. Important. There's nothing to patch, upgrade, ever ever buying domains is simple and if you need it you can get the help you need with squarespace's 24 7 award-winning customer support you have a safety net they empower millions of people from designers to lawyers artists to gamers restaurants gyms you name it they help them they turn great ideas into something real so head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code grace to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash grace. Offer code grace. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by FabFitFun. And guess what, guys? The FabFitFun Summer Editor's Box is now available. If you don't know, FabFitFun is a seasonal subscription box that delivers fashion, beauty, home, and fitness products for a life well-lived. And the Editor's Box is available for purchase in between seasonal boxes with newly discovered items and favorites from past boxes. And it has a fantastic value because all of the products, I'm saying 
every single product that is in this box is full size and many other products individual value is more than the entire cost of the box i mean you guys know what i'm talking about if you delve into any sort of you know fashion beauty self care products they are expensive and sometimes with subscription boxes you get trial sizes and you lose them or you forget about them or you're not encouraged to even try them all of these products in the editor's box are full size and let me tell you I was like a kid on Christmas morning when this box showed up at my door I was so excited I felt like I was doing like a personalized scratch off being like what did I win what did I win and it was awesome this okay listen to what's in the summer editor's box they have yumi kim train case in periwinkle or navy which is super cute they have ahava ahava i'm still learning to say all these names guys okay just let me have that it's a mineral hand cream they have spoonjo papaya yuzu box flower body wash infused buffer and a range of other awesome amazing products and like i said again they're all full size so sign up for fab fit fun today to get your summer editor's box use my code grace g-r-a-c-e to get ten dollars off your first box that's more value than you are even signing up for so go to fabfitfun.com sign up and get started getting the box for a life well lived use promo code grace to get ten dollars off your first box that's over two hundred dollars of products for only 39.99 go to fabfitfun.com and use code grace ten dollars off your fab fit fun box We're with Nick Turner. Yay. Yay. Am I on? Okay. <laughs> Yay. Huh? Yay. Sometimes it's like, shut up. We're not ready for you for 10 minutes. Oh, no. I've been on those po- po- kind of podcasts before, which are always very uncomfortable because you're watching <laughs> someone in like a radio booth for a while and then they like shuffle you in. And so there's no conversation beforehand. So it's a little awkward up top. Also, don't invite me over and then tell me to shut up. (laughs) (laughs) That is rude. (laughs) Um, No, that's, I think, probably a very, very accurate representation of your personality in a whole. I was talking. I think everything's rude. (laughs) No, but in a very sweet way. There's like a there's a a truthfulness behind it. Yeah. Um, Because Brooks wanted me to say, first of all, ask him who named his album. Oh, yeah. Very special. Um, you know, I guess it was Brooks. Um, <laughs> because uh, Brooks says it every time. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, um, so maybe it's you don't yelling. remember. It's called yelling. Yeah. Yeah. And and we were we were in a um, we were in a brainstorming session. And then I was like, uh, you know, maybe I could call it like, you know, deep thoughts about the world. Or like, uh, <laughs> I've got really you know good ideas or something. He's like, how about yelling? How about just you're a yelling asshole? Uh, and that's what your name of your album should be. And it worked out. Yeah. And then Comedy Central was like, drop the asshole. And, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yelling for brands for brands yeah. uh where did you record the special at the creek in the cave oh, in long island city yeah, new york i've been there before it is my comedy home is it because it was i mean when i did improv there a couple times but it was relatively new in like 2011 when i was like doing stuff there yeah um yeah I, that's probably i started they started doing comedy there like you know in like 07 or oh, something oh gotcha gotcha but uh, yeah, I guess it probably didn't explode until 2011. Um, but yeah, I done you know I perform there more than any other times. A lot of times, you know, just for myself in the green yeah. room, uh, <laughs> just yelling at the mirror, uh, eating free tacos. Get it? Oh, those tacos are great. Oh my god, really good tacos. Uh, have you been traveling? Have you been on the road lately? Um, I've been some places. Uh, I went to DC recently. I went to Canada. Oh, heard of it. Recently, yeah, it was really um, light out for a really (laughs) long time. Oh, the sun was out for a long time? Yeah, yeah. In the summer in Canada, uh, it's light out till 11. Oh, my God. Really? And then you're like, after the last show, you're like, oh, time to hit the bed. And then you step outside and uh, people are flying (laughs) kites. Oh, God. Canadian. But it's still late. I mean, it's 11. Get it, you know. Go to bed. Yeah, go to bed. kite in bed. Uh, where, cause I'm fascinated by this when you're a touring comic, I don't do stand up. It's so biz- not bizarre, but it seems very difficult to me to go up in front of a bunch of strangers that some of them probably don't know you 
and I'm sure you have like some. So- <laughs> uh-huh. Sure, sure. <laughs> but it's just so fascinating to me when you go up in front of a room of complete, let's say, complete strangers, and you just—I would are- say some of them know me. Some That's of them yeah, know you. Regret, yeah. uh, and just like the dynamic of feeling out a room and figuring out like what, how to shift your what you're saying to fit and accommodate these people's entertainment values. Sure. Yeah. I'm very blunt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you ever feel a need to like shift who you are? You're just like, fuck it. This is no, my set. I, um, I'll, if anything, you know, I'll go the opposite way mm-hmm. just to be like, I, you know, I was performing in Phoenix for some MAGA hats oh, boy. in the audience. Uh, and I just started declaring up top. You know, that I was like, I'm a socialist. Yeah, yeah. I'm gay. Whatever you think <laughs> I am, whatever you're afraid of, that's what I am. <laughs> and I have no respect for you. There was like a, someone was yelling about a bathroom bill what? at the at the feature before I went up. A bathroom bill? You know, about like the no tram oh, trans- yeah, yeah. Trans- yeah. Bathroom. Yeah. bathroom bill. And uh and that guy, you know, he was like less experienced, right. I guess, and didn't know how to handle it. But then I just couldn't wait. <laughs> and I was like, show me bathroom bill guy. Where are you? <laughs> he was uh, of 300 pounds of muscle. Wow. And he came up to me after the show and uh, went straight for me. You know, <gasps> and I'm just like, you don't know what's going to happen. You never. So many people have been punched. Yeah, that's what I, that's what's terrifying that these are strangers. What, wait, yeah. what happened? He comes up to me and just like real menacingly. And then, you know, puts his hand out and he's like, that was really funny. Oh my God. And I'm like, don't need the compliment. (laughs) Take it to the grave, B. I gotta go. Did you shake his hand? Of course I shook his hand. That guy was gonna murder me. Yeah, that's horrifying. Oh man, I, yeah. What do you? I haven't been to a bathroom since. <laughs> or Phoenix. <Too> afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what a town. Um, okay, I was gonna hold off on this, but I was just watching it this morning. Are you caught up on Ninety Day Fiance? I am. Have you watched this new season at all? Caught up with everything but the current season of uh, Where Are They Now? Or Got whatever it. that's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess because there's all, I just call them all 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, Nick got myself and Brooks very deeply obsessed with 90 Day Fiance. You know, it was a light suggestion. Light suggestion <laughs> that was a hard <laughs> obsession right after. It was, uh, Jack, do you know about this show? I don't, but I can guess from the title. What do you think it's about? <laughs> that uh, <laughs> you become a fiance for 90 days and at the end of the 90 days you get married. Is that it? I mean, Yes, <laughs> technically, but you're missing a lot of the nuance. All right, so please explain. It's funny because they explain the premise of the show uh, 18 times an episode. <laughs> yes, and then they uh, give you a preview of the next episode of them continuing to explain yeah. what the show yeah, is about. Yeah, well, it's just like you get 90 days. You can bring someone from another country that you've met to the United States for 90 days. And then at the end of the 90 days, they... Have to, you have to either get married to them or they have to leave the country because legally they're not allowed to stay. Oh, this longer. is like a green card reality yeah. show. Yeah, they're on the K-1 visa. Yeah, and that's weird. <laughs> especially right now, it's extra ultra weird yeah, and sure. fascinating. And they're, they're going through it. That's my alternative title to that show is people going through it. They, uh, some, like one couple a season, you think, oh, well, they're in love because right. they're both hot. <laughs> they both match on their like yeah. attractiveness physically scale. and then the other one is like i've never had a real life friend <laughs> and i'm i met this cam girl and now we're in love oh, and then God. she comes over and they and they have 90 days to figure it out and at the end they <laughs> always get married always 100 percent of the time sorry for the spoilers i think but... one person has gotten broken up yeah but then they found Muhammad. out that they got where ma- muhammad's at oh right but then they found out that they uh the one woman that said that she was done and then afterwards she was like the producer was like what'd you do and she's like oh we got married secretly uh, off yeah. camera and they were like what but they're oh, back man. on no spoilers. Got watch the <laughs> got watch a new season. There's a lot. This season it finally heats up. Oh yeah. Each episode's like two hours long, which is just oh, wow. so long. What it's, channel is this on? The Learning Channel. Of course. The yeah. Learning, the learning channel. channel. Yeah. yeah. And you learn so so much. Um. Well, speaking of reality shows, you what's your deal with Wahlburgers? 
Oh, I just um, yeah, I'm fascinated. By it. No, I just I'm fascinated. <laughs> well, because I was, by its existence, right? I was recently in Boston, and we passed a Wahlburgers in the airport, and there was Wahlburgers just like on TV the whole time that we were there, <laughs> like oh, yeah. their reality show about oh, of course. yeah about the it's I've been never on watched for like ten it. seasons or something stupid. <laughs> if I had a restaurant, my stand up would be playing constantly because <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is when you go past the restaurant. Yeah. It's the TV show playing in on a loop in their restaurant. Wow. Well, you're not there because you thought there were good hamburgers. <laughs> you're there because you think like the fat wall burger might be there. <laughs> <laughs> but I just looked it up, and uh, it, it had just gotten reviewed for a ten, uh, renewed for a tenth season. Yeah, that's crazy. Ten seasons is too much. That's <laughs> too much for. I mean, how long was Breaking Bad? <laughs> <laughs> These are the mo- this. That's the similar that's the comparison. show. Comparison. Yeah, yeah uh, it's the Breaking Bad of reality <laughs> television. And then Wahlberg, like Mark Wahlberg, comes through every once in a while. He right? just pops in. And he's like, "Hey guys, needed a bite before Transformers <laughs> Four. <laughs> and he tra- transforms and gets the hell out of there. Oh, have you been to? You ate. So I we didn't eat. Well, we didn't eat at the Wahlburgers. There's That's, one in like the fancy part of like where Sunset turns into Beverly Hills. There is. There's, there's a one Wahlburgers here? right there. Yeah, I saw it the other day. Wow. Uh, and I'm like, not only is this all existing, but it's like. A fancy it's a sit down restaurant oh it was we couldn't even eat at the one in or get a Too drink popular. in boston it was slammed oh i thought it was like a fast food joint uh, th- you would assume but that it's not it's like a, it's a it's like a sit down restaurant it's like a chili it's a sit down re- it's like spago okay. <laughs> you know if uh, no one there had ever worked in a restaurant before <laughs> it seems like i mean but to their credit it's pretty genius that like well their name sounds like burger Right. So what else are you going to do with that? Why name? not? Yeah. If you have something on TV, you can just make a restaurant, even if that True. thing's not a restaurant. True. Absolutely. And they're apparently thriving. People love it. They're, they found their demo and they're hitting it strong. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Congrats. Have, you ever, have you ever had a Wahlberg? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every two years I remember it exists. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't know that it had existed for this long. I can't believe really I heard been... I heard that it was going to be on the air, I guess, like 10 years ago. And I was like, ah, that won't last. Longer Boy, than was Seinfeld. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was looking through your Instagram a little bit. Oof. Uh, <laughs> that's your, yeah, that's the it's bio. It's mostly pictures of my feet. It's what the fans want. I mean, gotta get that wiki feet submission. Uh, it, one, it's Cheetah, your beautiful, beautiful cop. Yes, my, my little girl. Uh, and then uh, you were at weddings a lot. I've been to some weddings. Yeah, I feel like you've oh, been to yeah. a lot no, of weddings. Oh, yeah. No, I went to a wedding. Sure. I, I posted a photo. I, it was of like the moment at a wedding. Yeah. And, uh, but that was also listening to your album, uh, your special, and it's a lot about like all of your friends are getting married and you have to go to all these weddings. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what's your best like wedding guest advice to people? Oh, best wedding guest advice. Um, if you just no one give a speech. Um, <laughs> if no one asks you to give a speech, don't volunteer one. Yeah. If you were asked to give a speech, Mm -hmm. uh, the appropriate time for a speech is one second. (laughs) The appropriate time for a ceremony is one second. Nobody wants any of this crap. And if you bring up like any, like if you're like religion or lack of religion, I'm out. I don't want to know anything about that. Um, I just, uh, there's just no excuse for it. I saw um, a wedding that was like, it was it was like the third one in the day, you know, they can they get like cheaper as yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this wedding started at like 1030. Uh-huh. Uh, and then dinner was at night? after. What? Yes. What? I'm not. I am. Uh, I wish I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a reception before while they cleaned up, you know, wow. from the good wedding. Oh, yeah. And there's and still just garbage <laughs> well, on the on. ground. Well, was you... it in Canada and was it still daylight outside? <laughs> oh, God, I wish. <laughs> this is in sunny New York City. Oh, wow. beautiful. Uh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> the beautiful. I, I don't know which part. <laughs> New York City at 1030 at Long night. Long Island. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, took a $75 Uber home. Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, my God. At like two in the morning. Well, it we took a train there, okay. but by the time we got out, the trains weren't running. Right. Of course. So you know, there's but there's no Uber money that they offer. They should give out. Just give the, the envelopes discount back code. to you. So so yeah, it was. It, and then once we finally got in there, before we ate, it was like the whole ceremony, and then dancing, and then we were eating at like eleven thirty. 
uh, maybe like a third of the people were still there by the time oh, the food God, came out. That's really... And the speeches in this were were an hour. Oh, what? Man. And there was a guy. Yeah, it's like the dad well, gave a speech for like it might have been like half an hour, but somebody gave a speech for over fifteen minutes. Too long. Um, I mean, at, at a regular, if this wedding was at nine o'clock, it would a.m. It would have been more too tolerable. Long. Yeah, that's crazy. Brevity, brevity. Did, did you take your gift back? <laughs> did I bring a it? gift? Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any respect for your wedding. <laughs> I don't care about your marriage. Um, they mostly fail. Um, and I know yours is going to as well. Uh, everyone Fair. I know that got married in their 20s Bam. is done. Yeah. It's over. Uh, and so I don't give gifts because everyone I know that got married has been together for six years sharing an apartment. Yep. There's mm -hmm. nothing you need. The whole gift thing is like, well, you got to fill up your new house. Can't nobody get in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that is very fair. At, at, like if, if you are moving in together for the first time, then you have two sets of everything. You have and double. you don't need it even more. <laughs> get out of here. I got a $75 Uber. That's nuts. Wow. I've never given a wedding gift. That's a, that's a sincere fact. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that should be on your RSVP when you respond to the wedding. Take the date. <laughs> When you invite Nick Turner, you can in, you, you can expect someone giggling in the back row, and you can expect one hell of a dancer. There you go. And that is what I bring. Oh, so that's your gift. Uh, that is my gift. Yeah, yes. you bring my everyone together. Fancy feet. Um, okay, what do you think is the worst favor someone could ask you to do for them? Oh, favor. Like, I mean, I'm just trying to like, think. Like, can of, you help me move? That kind of thing. Of a favor that I would like. <laughs> um, you know, it, I mean, I certainly moving. I'll move. You know, I'm a, I can, I can okay. pick stuff up. You'll move for someone. I mean, I haven't in a really long time. <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking, uh, no, I, um, I have a, f I have a friend who every time we hang out, he asks me to pick him up. But he has oh. a car. Oh, yeah. And uh, So he wants you to be the designated driver. Well, it's like, I don't know. I like to drive. And even if it's like more convenient for me to drive, I just like, I'm getting resentful. I like, but you want the <laughs> he won't get He won't just drive there himself. We could like meet uh, there. But I, it's also just nice to know that they thought to offer the option. Even if you're going to be like, no, no, I'll do it. Just the fact that they even offered. Just offer. Yeah. Pull out your wallet, even if you know I'm paying. <laughs> Make the attempt. Yeah, yeah. I had a, um, I was carpooling with a friend to something the other day, and we kind of had this thing over Texas, like Mamrie and I, being like, um, should we carpool? Because we were going from like east side to west, and I was like, that'd be great. And she's like, do you want to drive or should I drive? And I was like, oh no, here's the standoff with this. This is gonna be the funny <laughs> moment. And I was like, my car tire is kind of screwy, which it is. She was like, okay. I'll drive. <laughs> like dot, dot, very, dot. very read between the lines. Kind of screwy. Yeah. I don't think the mechanic said that. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I heard. Um, kind of That can be fixed with a magic wand. Like <laughs> Attitude adjustment. Do you watch daytime talk TV at all? No way. No. When I'm at home uh, for the last month or two, you know, because I'm done with 90 Day Fiance, yep. I mostly watch, uh, binge watch, uh, ironically, my 600 pound life. That's my really? new one. Wow. I have not, 600 pound life. I have not brought myself to watch that yet. It's so incredible. Is it about, is there, <laughs> is it just the, a documentary on the life that they're living or is there like a mission to lose weight? Yes. Or is there a mission no, it's, to gain you know, weight? You know, like any show, it has its, uh, uh, the thing that happens every time, um, it's uh, someone who's 600 some pounds okay. and then they go to meet this doctor, Dr. Nazarden. The same doctor every yes, time? Yes, the same doctor every time. He's the producer of the show. Curious. <laughs> <laughs> and his whole practice is this. And then they go in and they get weighed and then they go, man, I knew I was fat, but I didn't know I was that fat. Oh my oh my. God. And then. Is it always like 600 pounds? Yes. Why that? Wait. Wow. Because most doctors won't help someone who's over 600 pounds. Really? Because there is almost no chance that they will be successful long term. Wow. Uh, it's a less than 5% chance. Got Jeez. it. Okay. Yeah. And so 
Uh, and what does this doctor do? Like lap, so, well, lap he, bands or whatever? It's, you know, it's a whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's like Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon Ramsay comes in and yells at you, yeah. but also like talks to you about your dead son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and Bar like, Rescue, fix, same thing. Yeah, Taffer yeah. There's, there's always in. some, there's always something. So they get psychiatrists and, you know, to gotcha. help them. And uh, it, I mean, it, it, it doesn't work so often. Mm-hmm. Um, and like it'll cover one episode is a year. Wow. And then wow. so it's like at the end, they're 500 pounds. And be like, I'm on my way. Here we go. Like, I don't know. Do you do Jeez. the deep dive of, because I do this now with 90 Day Fiance. That's how gross my life has become. I go and I follow up on their Instagrams to see like what's really going on in present oh, day. Oh, yeah. Have you done that at all? I don't. do. The only person I follow on Instagram. Well, see, I don't even follow. I just look them up. And then I make sure I don't hit that follow button because <laughs> that's when I've crossed the line. <laughs> uh, no, but I will look at some uh, some some ninety day fiance people. Yeah, just because I'm just like praying for each of them that they've broken up. Yeah, that's what I go to make sure. I'm like, I okay, go to see if Pow not- and Russ are still together, <laughs> and they are every day. Every day. Oh every day. <laughs> Russ is a zero. <laughs> <laughs> or a cero. Uh, yeah, he's from like Kansas City or Oklahoma City Oklahoma or something. Oklahoma sticks. Not <laughs> even. He can't even drive to Oklahoma City, I don't think, in three hours from uh. where he's from. Don't get me started! <laughs> <laughs> but wait, who's the most, like, I guess, guilty pleasure person you follow on social media? Um... Or look up on social media? Yeah, I, um, I follow... This is the, the most... Uh, conversation that I have about a follower uh, uh, between me and my girlfriend is uh, Diana Agron. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, is that the girl from, from Glee? Glee? Yeah, oh, okay. I, uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan uh, for acting, and I uh, like to, uh, you know. That's so anyway, I follow her on Instagram. Person. I don't follow really any celebrities right, besides right. Powell. Besides, are you <laughs> besides Powell, I want to know what smoothie she's drinking that day. Oh yeah, what uh, flat tummy <laughs> tea she's drinking. <laughs> Uh, wow. What's Diana Agron up to? Oh, she here. I'll tell you. Okay. She <laughs> is really uh, getting into uh, Snapchat filters. Oh, now okay. and a year ago All right. and two years ago, I think 85% of the, her pictures have dog ears and a dog mouth. There we go. That's and, very uh, Kardashian. You know, you swipe through those. There you go. Have you gotten into the filters? Uh, no, I mean, you know, when you are as photogenic as me, right. it's tough to it's obscure unfair. it. <laughs> unfair. Um, no, I'll, you know, I, I mean, I just, I, I, I swore off Snapchat. Yeah, um, I don't use it anymore. Well, you know, we filmed that thing for Snapchat last right. year. And uh, by the time it aired, Comedy Central no longer had to deal with Snapchat. Really? So it didn't even air on Snapchat. Oh, it was, wow. was it just on YouTube then? Yeah, they just put it on YouTube and then they hid it under like some <laughs> old episodes it was of called Chamberlain you, Heights or something. You're killing me, right? You're killing me. Yeah. And it's a whole series where Nick's just constantly in a coma and he every episode he like comes out of the coma and somehow ends up back in the coma based on him getting very... You wouldn't believe it. Upset. I, I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Grace was nice enough to come do an episode. And, uh, you know, I've I've felt terrible ever since because her co-star from the episode was uh, was was not professional. <laughs> Cheetah, his dog, was the co-star. So, and she was. No, she was perfect. She's cute. She's um, goddamn adorable. But she just all she does in life is lick. She wants to lick people's <laughs> mouth. Oh, gosh. You come over and you're like, hey, Cheetah, she's inside your mouth already. <laughs> well, you had to do a scene where she had to lick you and she wouldn't. So you so had to put peanut all, butter yes. in his mouth to oh, try and God. get her to lick. And so he kept having to pretend he's in a coma and put peanut butter in his mouth. <laughs> and then it's just like, and Cheetah's <sighs> like, not today. <laughs> and I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, there's 10 people staring at me. <laughs> I just can't do it when someone's looking. <laughs> and she couldn't do it. And if you watch the thing, there is like one split second <sighs> of her having a tongue on my mouth. <laughs> and that's all we could use. Wow. Yeah, there's some pop up video banned. behind the scenes. So go check out that episode. I burned her SAG card. <laughs> How old is she? She is six ish. Six ish? Yeah. Six and a half. She is. She. I saw your photo before and after of her grooming session. Totally different dog. I mean, this dog's. Oh, it's about to happen again. Oh, yeah, man. This dog's getting, getting nasty. Needs a summer cut. A summer cut. Keep it fresh. Um, okay. Well, speaking of like social media, do you have a favorite platform that you use? 
Um, I mean, I'm so bad at all of them. I guess favorite's not the right word. What's yeah. the one that you like most frequently look at? You know, I, I most frequently look at Facebook. Really? Because of Facebook groups. Oh. Facebook is trash. <laughs> yeah, see, I stopped using Facebook. The only reason to go on Facebook, I mean, I guess it's definitely Facebook. I, uh, I have been doing this running joke for uh-huh. a long time. I stopped doing it a few months ago just because it got too hard. Okay. It got too sad. <laughs> Uh, where I accept everyone that uh, requests me. Yeah. And then I unfriend everyone at will when they have like a status that I don't like. Sure. And that's your right to do so. Yes. And so people like it. It's got popular. But sometimes I forget to unfriend the person. And then I put up their wax status. Oh, God. And then they contact me. Oh, no. no. And Um, it's happened three times. (laughs) And on the third time, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I feel, I just wrote back to the guy, welcome to the fire. (laughs) And I stopped doing them. Wow. That's very, very funny. Uh, Yeah, but then it's like, but if you go to the groups and Mm -hmm. you just get specifically, and there's like just a small group of people that are just talking about something positive that you want. I'm in a box office summer uh, fantasy league. Summer what? box office fantasy league. What does this, this mean? This is the nerdiest thing that I do. Go for it. Uh, move like movie box office. Right. Oh, so, they see who's going to make the most money. Yeah, we did a draft for all the. Su- oh my god! So- okay, wow. wait. Who's your number one? Well, I think I'm going to win exclusively with my number one. Okay. The way that the scoring works, uh, it's uh, Avengers. Okay. I picked first. And I got the Avengers, and I don't think anyone's going to pass me. All my other movies are terrible. I had Action Point was my I haven't even heard of second that. movie. That was don't the Johnny Knoxville movie oh, uh, right, right. that came out and made uh, $17. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got Jurassic World? Um, well, Jurassic World is doing a lot better internet. And here's this is why it's there's only this Go one group. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of an international property. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> it's domestic because the reviews are affecting the box office domestically. <laughs> but, but, well, yeah, you gotta keep that's like the steroids uh, for sports. You gotta oh, keep it my clean. Gosh. Okay, so we'll edit that part out. <laughs> and uh, now I'm in a yeah. Facebook group that's just about cool guys with their Being expensive cool. cars. <laughs> <laughs> and usually people want to edit out like problematic talk about <laughs> politics, but nope, got it. No All way. Right. I think oh, everything should burn. Okay. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of because I feel like one of the first times I saw you was doing like warm up. Mm-hmm. Like, did you work for At Midnight or no, Craig Ferguson? Who'd you work for? Nope. 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 Um, I did uh, I did some Colbert recently. Yeah, crowd oh, warm up stuff. Warm, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, what's that like in comparison to do? Because I've watched people do that. And I'm like, this seems way harder than doing stand up. Um, yes. I, okay. It's uh, improvising. Right. Mostly. So for people that don't know, it's basically before a show is taping, you go out into the studio audience and you try to get them all in a good, positive mood to be laughing and energetic for the episode that they're going to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done, you know, I've done a handful of shows. My first warm up I ever did was uh, your recent guest, Kurt Brownaller's show, Bunk. Ah, uh, yes. That's Way a, back in yes, the day. That's where I saw it then. Because I, the po- I was on yeah. set for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just basically you just, you know, snort a bunch of Coke backstage. Yep. <laughs> and then you get out there and it's not, you know, less words as it is falling down <laughs> or uh, running around. <laughs> so, but Colbert specifically, they, jo- they, they want energy. They want right. you to yell, like call and response. Perfect. Like when I say Steven, you say Colbert. <laughs> That kind of stuff. And then, you know, it's bringing people on stage and humiliating them. Great. Um, And then uh, I had uh, the first time, you know, because it's like CBS. So it's they want someone who's like edgy, but also isn't going to curse or try to hit on a woman. Right. Who isn't going to have a moment where people bring out their cameras and start filming it. And then the show yeah, gets that'll shut be bad. down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they want some like maniac who, you know, will can rein it in. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's apparently it's a very small window of people. There you go. Yeah. There's a sweet spot. Um, okay, we're gonna take a break in a second, but I wanted to ask you, because I love hearing people's like worst auditioning stories or mm-hmm. like worst like acting on camera experience. Is there anything that comes to mind? Well, I did this um video with my dog. <laughs> uh and he couldn't <laughs> uh no man. I mean, my I I don't I have not had a good auditioning experience. I've been <laughs> 
all bad. I mean, really, I, I'm so bad <laughs> at it, and no one wants me to do it. Yeah. Um, I've been in an audition and just been like, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. You're mad at me. I can tell you're mad at me. I've had people sit me down, and they're like, okay, so here's how you act. Um, <laughs> I, had a, I had an audition once where they're like, okay, now take off your shirt. And I was what? like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell me this. This has to be written on the sides. Yeah, Put a is, sign on the door. This is give me some heads up. I am not going to do that. I'm just, I do not, I do not think my body is funny. Um, <laughs> it, it, it may be. But then on the way out, I like saw a friend of mine, uh-huh. uh, Henry Zabrowski, and he oh, was yeah. walking in. I'm like, not going to do it. We high fived. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> it was even more because it was like in the in the in the spot they have uh, someone lift up his breast to paint oh, under it, and that's in God. the spot. He's lost over a hundred pounds since then. Oh right, um, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He looks fantastic. Wouldn't get booked at that commercial uh, in a million years anymore. <laughs> that was his breaking point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, everything's humiliating. I mean, it's so true. I can't, I hate auditioning. I just, I go in and I know already and I'm just like, give them no energy. And then I leave and I'm like, I was a ghost to them. They have no idea. They I, don't care. I had a callback for a movie that was being shot in Pit, in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and there's like a very specific Pittsburgh accent. And oh, it was yeah. like, they were, the oh, movie yeah. was laying on it. Oh, no. And like the title of the movie and like all this stuff was like just very accent centric. Oh no. And then I went <laughs> First audition, and I didn't have one. Uh-huh. And they brought me in a callback. And then I guess I got a little more confident. Uh-huh. And I started one, and they were like, they stopped me. They're like, first off, do not. <laughs> <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> and I'm like, you should have told me this in an email. I really need more information. <laughs> I'm just assuming. That's the worst. Is oh, when you God. Assume. I, and I, I am not going to do it right now because I don't even know how. But I was going to say, I was like, I don't even. I look can't it even up. picture oh, it's what a, a Pittsburgh accent It's a is. hard accent sent to do yeah there, i had some friends who are from the pittsburgh area who had a web series called greg and donnie mm-hmm. if you watch their videos you can you can is it like philadelphia kind of but it's this weird like midwestern mm-hmm. twang mixed yeah. with like the mid-atlantic pennsylvania weird. it's very strange uh anyway just check out greg and donnie if you want to hear it because they do a great right. I'll, I'll i'll play one for you during the break so you can hear it it's very unique too yeah like yeah, that it's pittsburgh like, accent is very unique yeah it's kind of like the the maryland accent where you can hear sometimes in the um, wire when they use yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Can do, I can do i can do the maryland Incredible. accent can't give it to me it's just all about the o's gotta oh, make your yeah, o's real big yeah, yeah. yeah. O's. yeah the, like the aerials yeah hey hon yeah hey hon hon yeah you Use oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very it's a mid it's yeah. mid-atlantic yeah yeah well, <laughs> what podcast is it? Uh, you guys just got a quick dialect lesson. Um, on that, note, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we have some Twitter questions for Nick Turner, Nikki T. Yay. I'm not too deep. We'll be right back. Too deep, too deep, too deep, not too deep. This Grace Helbig. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by you guys, and we wanted to say thank you so much for yeah. listening. Thank you for taking the time out of whatever mundane car ride or whatever class you're avoiding or whatever, uh, I don't know, exercise you're doing to listen to our dumb voices. So thank you from the bottom of our dumb, dumb hearts. And I know there's a lot of uh, new people that are currently listening now, and mm-hmm. I say thank you and welcome. I hope you're enjoying the show. And if so, I would invite you to please leave us a review on the Apple Podcast app. Because I don't know if you guys know this. You can do that. That is A, you can do that. Mm-hmm. And B, it's a it's one of the best ways for um, discovery. It's how new people find show the show. Yeah. So if you want to share the quote unquote wealth, because we're expensive, <laughs> uh, please leave us a review. Uh, be as silly as you want with it. Hopefully be kind and let us know what you think if you're enjoying the podcast and want to see more and that way other eyes and ears get to get to what we're doing here we don't want to say we're desperate for the review but we'd be very gracious we would be very 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 much so so if you would like to leave us a review um just know that we review all of the reviews we read them all so um it will get seen by us if you if you post Mm -hmm. so um we encourage you all to do so so please do and thank you guys so much for listening thanks Uh, we're back. Okay, we're back. We're back. Okay, okay. I hope none of that's on there. No, no, no. <laughs> we're back. Wipe it away. Wipe it away. Um, but I'm sure you know this. When you look up Nick Turner, 
I've done it. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Um, you get a, a, I guess, quote unquote, famous drummer. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who knows? I don't have a Wikipedia. Have you met? Because this guy comes up all over all social media. Nick when Turner he, of Hawkwind. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. the band he's in now? Oh, I just yeah. know that he started with raincoats. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Raincoats, and he goes I've by Nicky Turner, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I um <clears throat> I'd love to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I had a I actually had a blog um like when people had blogs, uh-huh. you know. When you know it was uh and it was called Nick Turner Fights. And <laughs> I would start fights on the internet with other people named Nick Turner. This is hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> And he was, it was mostly like, you know, like. How would you start fights? You just like put up a post that says like, this guy sucks. No, I would target them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, it wasn't, I mean, it, it, that's the name of it, but it wouldn't yeah. start like a fight. Okay. But there was like this one Nick Turner who, I, you know, who had NickTurner.com or uh-huh. whatever. And I was like trying to get it. Um, I've never gotten Nick Turner on anything. Yeah. Um, I, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always like Nick S Turner or something, right? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Nick Turner on Twitter has not tweeted literally in like six years. That's yeah, bullshit. I have a, at Jack Ferry is giving the same. Yeah. Agita. I, and I've tried to talk to him and then, uh, nothing, he, he, nothing but I did talk to his brother <laughs> and, uh, I was like, Hey, yeah, no, just, I see you're not using it. Yeah. And then he goes, Oh, he's really proud of that. I'm what like, is he? Yeah. How hard is it to tweet? Proud of what? Proud of what? <laughs> having having at Nick Turner and not using it. Proud of what? Proud of just holding up. Someone now there's else's two own. verified Nick Turners, and neither one of us have it. Wait, they're both verified. Yeah, me and a there's a a, a reporter in New York. Oh, okay, yeah. that's a bummer. Yeah, um, well, but I feel uh, like I've worked with him actually, <laughs> Nick Turner. Yeah, he's great. We talk on Twitter all the time. <laughs> I love him. He's like a, like a genuine friend. <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> no, I mean, I know. I've talked to him on Twitter, you know, like once a year for the past six years or something. <laughs> How many Nick Turners did you target in this blog era? Um, you know, maybe t- 10 to 12. <laughs> um, one time, you know, it was just, I mean, it's more fun. I, tr- I tried to bully uh, a Nick Turner photographer in uh-huh. England into giving me free headshots. <laughs> But he would have had to fly himself out here. But he didn't go for it. Uh, uh, there was can't uh, imagine why. missed opportunity. Yeah, for him. there was one guy he didn't get back. The, uh, the there was a black country singer named uh-huh. Nick Turner. NickTurnerCountry.com. He, he doesn't do it anymore. Uh-huh. The site's down. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but I don't even have my own website. It's, my website is NickTurner.website. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, That's maybe this is purposeful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's well, there was, I mean, it says exactly what it is. Nick Turner <laughs> dot website. <laughs> I have no, I'm not proud of any of my online names. <laughs> Nick's Turner's, I mean, woof. <laughs> I mean, I hate it so much. It's got a ring to it. But now you can't change it or else, you know, they'll take your check away and you got to like, you could change contact it. Contact them, I guess. Yeah, you got to get into you gotta contact them. Contacting them. <laughs> you got to get them to change it for you. That's the only way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Can I get at Jack? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you some Twitter questions in a second. I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every guest on the podcast. Okay. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Okay, cold spaghetti, alive or dead. I think that the sensation of cold spaghetti <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> so I would throw it at my mom because she's the one I love the most. And I think she's the most deserving of that incredible sensation. <laughs> I think it's like a- an ASMR, you it know, really f- is. physically. Are you sure. into ASMR? Not at all. But yeah, I, me either. I can't get but I like to it. bring it up and then shame people who are into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had Nikki Glaser on and she's like, oh, yeah, she's crazy. Yeah, she loves it. And I, fundamentally understand <laughs> how people could love it but it just creeps me out so much what, what about yeah. the satisfying videos you ever see those where people are like squishing oh, like satisfying. squishing goo and stuff yeah like that? i like the ones where stuff fits in to other oh, things like a ball down like a pvc pipe yes. and it just rolls down perfectly incredible yeah. <laughs> that is great i love that stuff that gives me hope those yeah. kind of things i like a, an unfuck your habitat you know like cl- just people cleaning up their rooms uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it called Just that. putting something away. Oh, that's like a Unfuck Your Habitat is like a website that does Oh, does really? That, yeah. Oh, I got to check that out. Yeah. That's probably very inspiring. Uh, okay. The other question is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three <sighs> words or three small phrases or a mix. So mine is like college jogging front lawn. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, it's going to be hard to pick. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say planter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brooklyn 
4 a.m. Wow. Oh, wow. That does paint a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Was it after a wedding? Uh, I, illegally, I'm not, you know, I'm bound by the terms yeah, of this game. There's still a lawsuit in <laughs> the happening. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> they so, want to bring this to arbitration. <laughs> yeah. The first question is from Songbird Tomio. They want to know the worst heckler you've ever had. Uh, if okay. there's been a worst. I mean, you've been doing this forever. I'm sure there's been so many stories. Yeah, I had a guy, I was doing a bar show in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and um, the show, I, I mean, it was awful. I was tanking, zero laughs. And then I started <laughs> doing crowd work. Not many laughs. There, a guy was wearing, a, a, a white guy was wearing a Rasta hat, you know, <laughs> which could not be more like... Who's on that guy's side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one is ever on that guy's side. So I start making fun of it. The audience is like, hey, that's our friend Brian. <laughs> I'm like, come on. This ridiculous hat. And then, <laughs> and then some guy from the back started yelling, it, what'd you say about my hat? And I'm like, nothing. I'm talking to Brian. Get out of here. And he's like, how dare you say that about my hat? And I'm like, where are we going with this? <laughs> so then he starts walking towards stage. And Wait, again, this guy in the back that thinks that you've talked about his hat. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, and I, I, I did not show up to the sh show until halfway through. And mm -hmm. that's going to get important. Uh -oh. <laughs> so he comes up, uh, he comes towards the stage and like, uh -huh. you know, like I was saying, everybody gets punched, um, but not me, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> so I picked up, the mic stand. Oh, so he's actually like He's physically... coming towards, and so I'm on stage and I'm like, do not come up here. Oh my I God. I pick up the mic stand and I'm saying, and I say, if you come up here, I will hit you with this. <laughs> oh my God. Do not come up here. I do not know who you are. <laughs> do not come on stage. Do not do it. So he comes on stage. <gasps> I throw it on his foot. <laughs> oh my God. And then I leave and I go, I get off stage and I go out the door to what I did not know because it's my first time at this bar and I didn't get there early. It was just an outside patio. Oh no. And You're so, trapped. You're and it's fully completely trapped. window. Uh, you know, so I get out there and then the audience is just looking. <laughs> 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 I'm just standing there and everyone's really confused. And then I get back out and it is explained to me that the guy who came on stage was the DJ oh. of the show who apparently two hours, like two weeks later got fired from oh this place for I don't know what because he seemed like a great guy. He seems very professional. Um, but then he like asked me to go outside with him afterwards and I was like, all right. Oh my <laughs> God. Get out of my face. Anyway, I just, That's wow. So there's so many layers to that. How long ago was this? Oh, this was, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's still not that long ago. No, this is current me. Yeah. <laughs> this this is... can still happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't come on stage, man. Uh, that's What was he? But he was coming on stage to de to change like the lights or something? No. He no, was he coming was on coming stage to, to talk to, to me in like, oh, we're both, we're doing a bit now. Oh. Oh, okay. But so I've had so many people come up on stage. I had like a homeless guy wander in at a show at Downtown Independent. Oh, really? Downtown Los Angeles. You know, it was like Skid Row. Yeah. And uh, he just like came, just wandered in on stage and then like was telling me I was racist. He just walked in and started telling me and I was racist. And just started going off, yeah. And then um, there was like, fit, and then like the host came on and it got a little physical <gasps> and I tried to like move and he was completely wet. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. It was really weird. That that whole video is online. That it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Oh my. That's so. I mean, those are the moments that I'm like, I'm good. I think about doing stand up, and then I hear that, I'm like, mm, I'm okay. Because I would literally shit my pants on stage if someone yeah. started walking up towards the stage. You know, I feel like people would um, get upset at you uh, less than they get upset at me. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe my inherent fear of all of them from the get go yes. might give them some empathy for me. Maybe I should stop uh, opening my sets with, try something! <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'll think about it oh, i mean you, you, you do you you do you um okay someone wants to know your favorite animal and would you marry it would i marry my dog cheetah <laughs> seems illegal i uh, would uh not marry my dog because i also am not married to my five and a half year uh living life partner <laughs> Um, I refer to her as my wife or my partner. Uh -huh. I want to skip marriage okay. so badly. I want to be whatever anybody else thinks that they are with uh -huh. their sham weddings. 
<laughs> you just avoid the cost of a wedding. God, anyone. I just went to a wedding of a, well, I, <laughs> I, you know, I said this, I forgot about the microphone. Um, no, I just, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to marry anything, especially a dog. But how did you get Cheetah? I got Cheetah at uh, the Animal Care and Control uh-huh. in uh, in New York. Um, we were the first people to see this dog. Okay. And she was fat, so fat. <laughs> Every document she had, someone had written, it was like morbidly obese, <laughs> or like severely <laughs> obese. They, apparently the people who had her before had found her okay. and then like took her in their home, but Cheetah didn't get along with this giant dog they had, so they kept Cheetah in uh, a cage. So it got no exercise. Cheetah was actually called Rita then. <laughs> her former life. <laughs> yeah, and so we definitely hated that, yeah. but I wanted her to, you know, rhyme. Yeah. Uh, and so they kept her in a cage, and then she, uh, they just, she just got fat. They just fed her. I don't know, whatever. She wow. said she just got no exercise. And so, and so we saw her, and we were like, that fat dog. Yeah, <laughs> like that fat dog is gonna be so easy because yeah. so fat. She lost all the weight in a day and a half. Oh my God. <laughs> Just running around. <laughs> so and we're like, I'm oh no, we, <laughs> Finally. we have an active dog. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. I mean, she's basically my 600 pound life, but in real life. I am Dr. Nazardin <laughs> to this dog. I'm done with her excuses. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know what kind of pie accurately describes your personality? Okay, well, that was a twist. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be the one I like, which is blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that the one that accurately describes my personality is strawberry rhubarb. Oh, go on. Because no one eats rhubarb. <laughs> no, I've never seen anyone snacking on rhubarb. <laughs> you know, at those are the t- <laughs> those are the two sides of the personality that you need. You know, okay. it's like you need the strawberry, of course, to get everybody in. Yeah. And then you need the, the rhubarb for them to as, just, I don't know, not leave. <laughs> Be confused as to why they're staying. Yeah, what's happening? Um, someone wants to know more You're Killing Me episodes. Well, you know, bring back Snapchat. I know. <laughs> Someone bring back Conmee Central's deal with Snapchat. Yeah, that would be great. If only I could do more uh, episodes for a dollar each. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I would love to do more, but uh, I had to go get uh, money. What uh, If you had like a dream <laughs> job scenario or dream project, what would that be? Um, it's a, an annual thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) once a year. Uh Um, I start prepping for it a month ahead Uh and I get 11 months off and, (laughs) and it's, um, I don't know, on Netflix, maybe Uh not the day they drop 47 albums, um, but like a different day. That's what I just, I think about like the jobs that seem cool, you know, like late night talk show host. Sure. But that's so intense. uh, There's nothing more intense. Yeah. That's, you have to leave your body. You don't get to be a person. No, you're on autopilot. No, thank you. I mean, I, you know, I want to, I want to create something, um, and but then you know, you have to like do it. Yeah, then you have to actually yeah, execute that's it. That's a problem. With yeah. That. Oh God, I made a sitcom pilot once, and then you know, it's like if that had gone, you know, you really got to show up and I do just it. You really <laughs> got to do it. What's your if you could sub into any movie or any like franchise, which one would you want to be part of? Um, okay. Franchises. I uh let's see, what's my fave? I cause here's the problem. Uh, I really hate franchises. Okay, here about how about this? Yeah. If you could be in a buddy cop film with someone, who would it be with? Ooh. Brooks. With, with Brooks? Brooks? Oh yes. my God. That'd just be called screaming and yelling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no one got any information across to the other person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be, um, yeah, the audio yeah, watch, guy would watch, have- Watch Brooks' is, You're Killing Me, Epson, just if you want if you want to see someone matching my intensity. Oh, that's what he told me before I went to shoot it. He was like, they bring me back because- Nick and I just yell at each other the whole time. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I saw it firsthand. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is what happens. Eh? Yeah. If it's someone more demure, then it's like the movie's just me yelling at them. Yeah. And I mean, I'm like, why? Um, are you working on another special? 
Um, special. Did I do a first special? Or like another stand-up I, um, album? I hope to record another album um, at the end of the year, at the beginning of next year. Oh, very cool. Um, and what's the... Because pro- I've heard from different stand-ups and comics what the process is for that. Like, what's that for you? Do you just go around and just work material constantly? Yeah, which, you know, in LA is uh, nearly impossible. Um, yeah. But uh, I have like a... I'm doing like a a, a tour in the fall oh, cool. kind of where I'm going to a, a bunch, like doing a bunch of one nighters to get, to prepare. But it's like, um, the tour, you know, is mostly, I'm in LA. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you going to Anaheim? No, I mean like I'll travel, but then, you know, four days later I come back. I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, not like in a van <laughs> traveling <laughs> yeah. around. I am too old for that. I love my life. Here. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> my lady and my dog. What are your like ideal other than like the Creek in the cave places to perform at? Um, well, there are so many great clubs in LA really? um, that are really fun. Like just, uh, like performing in like a packed, uh, mm-hmm. a Hollywood improv or like oh, yeah, a yeah. laugh factory. Um, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, cause like there's, I don't know, things are too spread out in New York. And if you're, you know, True. if you're not at the comedy cellar, like it's, it's sometimes it's suspect, Yeah. but there's like just some venues in LA that are just always full. That's cool. Um, that being said, not those. I like <laughs> alt rooms. <laughs> like Largo. Um, I like uh, hot tub to oh, hot speak tub's of, great. Uh, you yeah. know, that so show, Virgil. they were the first, they were like the first people to ever book me on a book show. Really? With Kurt and Kristen at hot tub. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, in like 06. It, that show has been going for so long. It's nuts. Cause when we talked to Kurt about it, I had no idea that it started at the pit. New York. I was like, that's how long this has yeah. been going. It's crazy. And yeah, it's it's insane. I've uh, I've hosted it a bunch of times, and it's yeah. always weird because like you you the first thing that you do as a host uh-huh. is step on stage and announce that Kristen Schultz not there. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> so- and Kurt's not here, and Chris is not here. Uh, so uh, that's fun to be yeah, the voice yeah, of disappointment. Yeah, that's fun. But I'm like, I don't care. I'm still, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more talented than the both. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just make sure that it doesn't get back to them. And that shows at the Virgil. See, so like performing at the Virgil. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Virgil's a great venue. Um, you ever been to Largo? I haven't. Oh, really? No. I've never I been to either. Largo. Oh, no. Once I have. Yeah. It's a great space. It's very cool. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the, the bookers are great fans of the podcast. So they'll, uh, they'll be in touch. There we go. Well, I hear it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, someone wants to know, what would you name a pet squirrel? Um, Flybo. <laughs> Spell that, please. Flybo. F L Y B O. <laughs> okay. Flybo. Yeah. You know, because uh, there's a lot of squirrels that can fly, and Ooh. I want to just hit home that this guy can't. And he can't? <laughs> hey, Flybo. <laughs> <laughs> JK. Go bring me some nuts, idiot. <laughs> Uh, so mean. <laughs> Why do I gotta be nice to squirrels? Fair, totally fair. Um, does cheetah get along with other animals? Uh, humans. Humans, not animals. No, cheetah barks. Cheetah, she's fine. She doesn't like any dog bigger than her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. All the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, she just kind of ignores other animals. Really? Um, that's yeah. There's like two dogs that she's like been with a hundred times and like now is comfortable with, but uh, she's just like there's no reason for any any other animal to exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense. I respect her just like hard and fast rules on that. Yeah, well, she's got, she's, she's got a lot of hard and fast rules. She's been through it. She was put in a cage because of another animal for so long. So I get being like, fuck you guys. I, know. I deserve to exist. Um, well, we're reaching the end of the podcast. Nice. Yes. Um, thank you for your time, Nick. But before you go, we give everyone a personalized fortune cookie just oh, for them, um, which you are allowed to eat or not eat. It's up to you. Julie has it right here for yes. you. Well, okay. I, yep. Yep. I mean, the presentation is 100% suspect. It's, um, <laughs> what? A That's lot what? of fortune cookies come inside of a wrapper. <laughs> this oh, one yeah. comes on a plate a plate no wrapper fortune completely hanging out yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's stuff in there <laughs> you don't need to open it i see what happens here uh we got okay. a good one we got a good one wow i oh i can't wait <laughs> oh boy 
Okay. Oh, wow, this is a this is an abnormal one. Yeah. <laughs> Not tomorrow or the next day, but someday you will wake up in your very own Freaky Friday moment with other Nick Turner, the drummer. Oh no. Oh no. You will learn nothing from the experience. Good. <laughs> Cheetah will sadly not know the difference. Okay, it wasn't heartbreaking until the end. <laughs> <laughs> like most fortune cookies, build you up and then tear you down. There's no numbers on this. No, we don't believe in numbers. Um, I got to plug my podcast. Please do. Um, I don't have one. Plug, but I, plug everything it, that deserves to be plugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, it's it's coming. Okay. It's, <laughs> It's going to be here in like three months. Yes, I swear to God. You see this um, this bruise here? I see, um, yes. It's not, okay, this. There's a large bruise on his forearm. It looks like like bite marks. Last week, Uh this used to be here and here. Over your whole elbow? Yes, like like a third of my arm. Jesus. Because I'm starting a new podcast with Nick Vatterot. Uh Uh-huh. About how to make money quickly. Okay. This is about so every episode we do something to like make money quickly. Okay. And then we talk about it. And okay. the first episode is plasma donation. Oh. So we went to give plasma, oh and my- there was uh, an accident. Oh my god! <laughs> an accident. There was an accident. Okay, I don't want to spoil anything. No, I moved my arm, and apparently the the needle like moved. Oh I my- just started because the way plasma oh. works is they put your they take out blood, take the plasma out, then put the blood back in your body. Ah. So for a while, the blood was just like shooting back into my arm outside oh my of my vein. God. Oh, God. Wow. So that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to supply photos with this podcast when it comes out. Yes, yes. I there are so. There are photos, but I, I would suggest against wow. it. So what's the podcast called? It's called Get Rich Nick. Get Rich Nick. And I'm assuming it'll be just wherever you can find podcasts, SoundCloud, it'll be, iTunes. It'll be right there. Okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, this podcast probably won't come out for like a month or two. Yeah. So, oh, so it'll Maybe be it'll come out. pretty oh, great. good timing. Yeah, yeah. And um, your tour, quote unquote. Yes. Yeah, starts it- in September. You can check it out. Uh, the date's on nickturner.website. That website. <laughs> that's not a joke. That's not- actually his website domain. Or you could Google Nick Turner. And and should and, people uh, follow you anywhere else, like on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, if you'd like, I mean, to you talk are about- verified on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, get, you know, hit me up there. You know, I'm the drummer. if that's your thing. But uh, <laughs> what I really want people to uh, to look at is. Uh, my summer box office movie group. Uh, <laughs> oh, please. I want to find out. I kind of want to join. We'll do a follow up <laughs> in a couple in months there. in the fall and see who won the final. Okay. The final. I'm okay. rooting for you, buddy. Okay, thank, uh, you. <laughs> thank you, Nick Turner. Go check him out. Go check out his tour and uh, his new podcast. And if anything, just follow Cheetah on Instagram. Cheetah. Cheetah's got a really great Instagram going. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. It was Grace Helbig. This summer, step up your grill game with the revolutionary Beyond Burger. This mouthwatering masterpiece is the only plant-based burger that is so meaty, it's sold in the meat case at your local grocery store. It's packed with protein, it's better for you and the planet, and will satisfy even the most ravenous of carnivores. Ready to taste the future of protein? Visit beyondmeat.com slash grace to find a local retailer near you that's beyondmeat.com slash grace. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Produced and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer Melissa D. Mons. With writing by Diane Kang. Audio support by Chris Henry. Editing by Melissa D. Mons. And an extra special thank you to Flula for the theme music. 